All right, so we have Rumple Still Skin, one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite fairy tales. I just love this one. I don't know why. But, okay, so not only am I going to read, we're talking about characters, right? I want you to think of who are the characters in the story and who are the good characters and who are the evil characters, okay? I want you to be thinking about that. So at the end of the story, I want you to turn to someone and I want you to tell them who was the good character or characters and who was the evil character. All right, so Rumpelstiltskin, retold and illustrated by Paul O. Zelinsky. I just love the, the pictures of this. This is another uh, Grimm's, Brothers Grimm's fairy tale, and I just really, really love it. Okay, Rumpelstiltskin. From the German, it was originally written in German, so now it's translated to English, of uh, the Brothers Grimm, retold and illustrated by Paul O. Zelinsky. Once there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. On his way to town one day, the miller encountered the king. Wanting to impress him, the miller said, I have a daughter who knows the art of spinning straw into gold. Now the king had a passion for gold and such an art intrigued him. So he ordered the miller to send his daughter to the castle straight away. When the was brought before him, the king led her to a room that was filled with straw. He gave her spools and a spinning wheel and said, You may spin all night, but if you have not spun the straw into gold by morning, you will have to die. With that, he locked the door and the girl was left inside alone. So here she is. <laughs> Yikes. There sat the poor miller's daughter without the slightest idea of how anyone could spin straw into gold. For the life of her, she did not know what to do. She grew more and more frightened and then she began to weep. Suddenly the door sprang open and a tiny man stepped in. Good evening, Mistress Miller, he said. Why are you sobbing? Oh, the girl cried, I must spin this straw into gold and I don't know how. What will you give me if I spin it for you? The little man asked. My necklace, answered the girl. The little man took her necklace and sat down at the spinning wheel. He pulled three times, whirr, 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 and the spool was wound full of gold thread. He fitted another spool on and whirr, whirr, whirr. Three pulls and that one was two as full. And so it went until morning when all the straw was spun and all the spools were full of gold. See all the gold ones. When the king came at sunrise, he was amazed and delighted. All that gold only made him greedier. So he led the miller's daughter to a large room filled with straw and he ordered her to spin this straw too before dawn if she valued her life. The girl did not know what to do. She began to weep. Once more, the door opened and the little man stepped in. What will you give me if I spin this straw into gold for you? He asked. The ring on my finger, answered the girl, and the little man took her ring. Then he sat, set the spinning wheel whirring, and before the night was over, he had spun all the straw into gleaming gold. Shortly after sunrise, the king returned. Piles of golden spools glowed in the morning light. The king rejoiced at the sight of so much gold, but he was still not satisfied. He led the miller's daughter to a third, even bigger room that was piled high with straw. Tonight, you must spin the straw too, ordered the king, and if you succeed, you shall become my wife. Because, he thought, I could not find a richer wife in all the world. When the king had left, the little man appeared for the third time. What will you give me if I spin for you yet once more? He asked. I have nothing else, the girl replied. Then promise that when you become queen, your first child will belong to me. <gasps> the millers are aghast. <gasps> How could she promise such a thing? Then she thought, but who knows whether that will ever happen? 
And as she could think of no other way to save herself, she promised. And the little man once again spun all the straw into gold. When the king came in the morning and found everything as he had wished, he married the miller's beautiful daughter and she became a queen. A year passed and the queen brought a handsome baby boy into the world. She gave scarcely a thought to the little man, but one day he appeared suddenly in her room. Now give me what you promised me, he demanded. The queen pleaded with the little man. He could take all the royal treasure if he would only let her keep her child. But her pleading was in vain. Then she began to weep so piteously that at last the little man was moved. I will give you three days, he said. If by the end of that time you know my name, you may keep your child. Long into the night, the queen sat, and through the next day, thinking over all the names she had ever heard. That evening, the little man returned, beginning with Asper, Mel Melchior, and Balthazar. The queen recited every name she knew, one after another, but to each one, the little man replied, That is not my name. The second day, the queen had inquires made in town, searching for new names. And when the little man came that evening, she posed the strangest and most unusual ones to him. She tried beastie ribs and leg or ram and string bones. But he would only reply, that is not my name. Now the, the queen grew to truly frightened and she sent her most faithful servant into the woods to look for the little man the servant searched through the thickets and over clearings deep into the forest at last near the top of a high hill she spied him so look she went all around i think that's where he is right there huh yeah i think so too he was riding on a cooking spoon round a great fire and crying out, I brew my beer, I bake my loaves, and soon the queen's own son I'll claim, oh lucky me, for no one knows that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The servant made her way back as fast as she could manage and at midday reached the castle. You can imagine how glad the queen was when she heard the name. Late that evening, the little man arrived. Now, Mrs. Queen, he said, do you know my name or do I take the child? So the queen asked him, is your name Will? No. Is your name Phil? No. In that case, is your name Rumpelstiltskin? <gasps> the devil told you that! The devil told you that! shrieked Rumpelstiltskin, and in a fury he jumped on his cooking spoon and flew out the window. That's my favorite part. And he never was heard from again. All right, so my question to you is, who is the good character in the story? Is it the queen, the miller's daughter? Who is the evil character? Could it be Rumpelstiltskin? He wasn't very nice, was he? Although that king wasn't so great either. But I'm thinking the two characters, we got the good character and the evil character. All right, go tell someone who is the good character and who is the evil character. All right. All right, I'll see you at the next story. Bye-bye.